Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. And here we have um, Troa Storm, aka Troa, um, that Japanese word thingy that you can pronounce <laughs> better than me. Saizuki. Saizuki. All righty. And um, we are here today to talk about the stigmas and stereotypes commonly associated with cosplayers and how in most cases they do not apply and are merely just fear-based psychological projections. And I will admit that at first, before you reached out to me, um, I, I even, you know, suffered that just slightly because here you are, this beautiful girl with this awesome deviant art profile and all these pictures and everything and just doing your thing. And, you know, just the typical like, you know, oh, well, she's she's pretty and she's popular and she's got all this going on. You know, why would she even want to talk to me, you know? And it, that's kind of like, you know, the whole like stigma idea to where like, you know, we based on our own fears and insecurities and stuff we psychologically project onto somebody else and you know we're just thinking oh well they're good at this and they're dealing with these people and blah 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 why would they want to deal with little old me anyway you know what i mean and especially like you know with with guys too you know it's just like when a guy you know looks at the girl doing her thing and he's just thinking like yeah she's probably just gonna think i'm creepy or something if i say hi to her or whatever and you know but unfortunately with some people that morphs into an even bigger dysfunction to where it goes beyond that and people are thinking like oh well she's probably arrogant she's probably full of herself she's probably gonna like treat me like shit if i even try to talk to her or whatever and you were telling me that you deal with a lot of that sort of, you know, stigma within the cosplay universe there. Because apparently you go to all these, like, comic cons and cosplay photo shoots and all sorts of stuff and deal with all sorts of people. And just recently you were at uh, GameStop uh, doing your whole Laura Croft thing because of the uh, newest uh, bit of uh, badassery they've just come out with in the newest, you know, video game series and all that. So, yep, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yep. So, tell us all about uh, what you do with your cosplay stuff and the shit you take from the people psychologically projecting and all that good stuff that we've had plenty of conversations about, but everybody else wasn't privy to that. So, let's get into it. You've got the floor. Uh, well, basically, when I started cosplaying, I started out with the thing that I wanted to be a cosplayer that. Once I gained experience, I could help other people who wanted to do it. I wasn't going to be the cosplayer that just did it for the likes, that just did it for all the faves. I didn't. I wasn't going to do it just to get attention. I did it because it was a hobby. And uh, one of my cosplay idols, um, Jen Croft, you can look her up. She actually does the same thing. She is an amazing cosplayer, and she's such a sweetheart. She's so easy to talk to about cosplays. So that was basically one of the things that I started off doing is I wanted to be a cosplayer that any other cosplayer would feel comfortable coming to for help and asking for advice or, you know, where did you get this? Where can I get it? And stuff like that. Yeah, I know just just recently, um, and it's kind of been headlining in social media lately, um, there's this chick by the name of um, Asina O'Neill who um, did like the whole like, um, social media modeling and all that stuff and she was in in this dichotomy of instead of doing it because she enjoyed it and just you know expressing herself and doing her thing she had this you know view of herself of oh if i don't have all these likes if i don't have all these views if everybody doesn't like me then then you know i'm nobody as a person and i'm pathetic and blah 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 so you know, she she got all the way up to this high status to where she had corporate sponsors and everything else. And, you know, she realized that she really didn't like who she was becoming and just how how fake and, and bullshitty it all was. 
And, you know, so right now, I guess she's still going through some cognitive dissonance to where, like, part of her is still blaming the tools because, like, she had a bit of a freak out and, like, deleted her YouTube account and social media accounts and all this. And I think now she's starting to see, okay, that might have been a little drastic. So it's like now she's got, like, a new Facebook page and she's got a, a blog up at, like, you know, letsbegamechangers.com, I think it is, and whatever. And it's like you can kind of see the process of of her trying to to sort herself out and level off and you know just kind of try to to tell people about you know what happens to girls like that and you know to not get caught up in all that and to just do what you love doing because you love doing it you know so that you don't end up turning into this narcissist um a lot of a lot of girls I've noticed are actually afraid to acknowledge their own beauty, acknowledge their own creativity and all that because they think, oh, if I acknowledge that, then you know, I'm gonna become this this dark side of the forest kind of, you know, narcissistic bitch or something and I don't want to corrupt myself. When really narcissism is is just the ultimate of low self esteem and inferiority complex that then the narcissist overcompensates by having a superiority complex. Whereas I've noticed a girl who actually is accepting of her self-worth and accepting of her beauty and realizes the effect that she has on people, it's a bit easier for her to take compliments, her levels of appreciation are raised, and the more that she appreciates herself and appreciates her life, it's easier for her to appreciate others and appreciate what other people are doing. So the appreciation just kind of builds like positive bank interest and nothing bad comes of it. Whereas like when people are in this self-loathing, that's where the narcissism comes in because it's just an overcompensation for an inferiority complex. And I'm, I've seen, you know, so many girls go through, you know, the dichotomy of that. What do you have to say? Well, on, going on off that in a mimicking it to a cosplay standpoint, you know, a lot of cosplayers go through that. You know, they're just starting out, you know, they see, they, they go on uh, Facebook or DeviantArt, Google, and they see all these girls, you know, who walk around in, you know, bikini cosplays and, you know, the, the series uh, Kill a Kill, those cosplays, they're all very revealing. So a lot, a lot of girls get it in their heads that, um, oh, I got to be able to show skin and look really good in a costume in order for people to like my cosplays. And so that falls into the thing where I have to be, you know, semi-naked, semi-nude just for people to like my cosplay. No, that's not true. With cosplay, you know, you should begin to take pride in the costumes that you make. You know, you put in, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten hours of work into a costume. Yeah, you're, you know, your butt and your boobs may not be hanging out, but you're fully covered in a costume that you made yourself by scratch. You put in the blood, sweat, and tears into it. Be proud of that. And if you're proud with your costume, that's where your likes are going to come from. You don't have to sell yourself out, uh, you know, show your entire body just to get appreciated in a costume. Yeah, totally. I mean, I know that, like, the the girls, like, you know, whether it's cosplay or otherwise, any sort of, like, you know, them expressing themselves and whatever, the girls that I find, I guess, and I don't mean this in a societal context, but that I find the most hot, the most appealing, the most wow, are the ones that have that high level of confidence and the high self-worth and that within that high level of confidence and self-worth they are they are they are genuine people and they express themselves genuinely and they have equal respect for for themselves and others and you know these are the type of girls that don't treat everybody else like shit they're not walking around like oh i'm all that you know they just have and that this, comes like, out when in the when in the when they're in cosplay too because they're walking around in the costume that they handmade they spent hours and hard work of making They'll walk around a convention and they'll see that in other people. So there is initially there a point of contact that they can talk to the other person about. It's just like, you know, walk up to them and be like, hey, I love your costume. How long did that take you? You know, what materials did you use? How did you do that? And it just it creates a likability to that cosplayer because they look human. Clearly, their costume is not elitist material, but you want to know what? They're happy. They're confident in it. And the costume just looks amazing. 
Yeah, and they're just they're projecting this just a sense of accomplishment and the sense of personal empowerment and the sense of of gratitude. Accomplishment because they appreciate. made the costume. Yeah, and gratitude and appreciation instead of this, you know, narcissism and, and vanity. And it just like it really it really shows. It's like you know, I, I like to say that, hey, you know, the, a beautiful body is just a corpse without personality. So it's like when I see girls that like physically look beautiful, but their personality completely sucks, that's ugly to me. That's nasty. That's like skanky, skankzilla yuck, you know, whereas a girl who is just genuinely herself and authentic, that is a, a complete and total turn on. And it just makes you feel inspired by her and you're thinking wow a little more hope for humanity here you know not not every girl out there is is one of these people going around no oh, i'm all that and that there's actually some genuine relatable human beings and that's really where you know the the appeal is because it's not simply just what they're wearing or their popularity or whatever it's that outward expression <laughs> of authenticity that they put themselves into this and they are expressing as themselves and they're not trying to live up to anybody else's expectations it's just like hey i'm me so yeah there it is whatever and that's just totally cool yeah so um how often do you think in in your experiences um do you come across, you know, I guess the the, the problem of, of beginning cosplayers having, you know, all of these preconceived notions and psychological projections? Like, is it a minority of the time? Is it like half the time? Is it most of the time? Like, how big of an epidemic, you know, is this? I'd say it's become more of a problem uh, in the recent years since the media has actually taken a focus on cosplay. The whole thing about, you know, you can see the differences when you go to conventions about qualities of costumes. You get some people, you know, who spend hundreds of dollars on their costumes, whereas, you know, cosplaying on a budget like I do. And it's just, it's become more and more common now that the media has turned its attention. You know, you get some of these big name cosplayers going to these little conventions because they get more praise there because a lot of these small town conventions, people just don't have the funds to put into these hundreds of dollars costumes. Yeah. And you'll see it when you go to conventions, you know, they'll huddle in their huddle in groups or like stay out of like the main corridors. I like to go up to them and be like, that is an amazing costume. How did you make it? And it just you can see it when you walk up to them. They're all like, you know, I know my costumes aren't the best, but. I work on my costumes, so I'm 100% satisfied when I get done. I mean, I ask my friends for help, and we put our blood, sweat, and I put my tears into my costumes. Because <laughs> sometimes you just want to throw them at the wall. So when I put them on, I feel the sense of accomplishment be like, hey, I made this myself. You know, it was hard. Sure, it doesn't look 100% accurate, but I'm comfortable in it. And so I think it looks the best out of everybody's. And I just wish more cosplayers, beginning cosplayers, would have that much faith in their costumes. But I do understand going to conventions that it can get overwhelming because everybody comes into cosplaying with a different level of skills available to them. Yeah. In most of your experiences, like, do most people come up to you recognizing that, hey, you're just a regular, you know, person who's just enjoying what she's doing? Or do you get more of people assuming that, you know, just because they have an opinion that they like your stuff and it's good that in their mind they're thinking that oh well she must be some narcissistic bitch or something like you know is it is it are you getting more more the negative reactions from people or more the positive reactions from i mean i know the people who are more experienced and are already in your circles like they know you they know you're not some stuck up bitch or whatever but like the the, the newbie who ha who knows nothing about you and sees you for the first time like you know what type of responses you typically get from you know from them well typically um most of the cosplayers that I meet are just beginning out are you know, typical really shy but when I, they come up to me and they'll strike up a conversation and I'll be generally interested in what they have to say so I guess 
I would fall in the norm of they don't have a problem coming up and talking to me. At least from what they've told me, I seem really approachable to them. So, and I enjoy it. People coming up and just randomly starting up a conversation while I'm at a convention. Yeah. How how approachable do pe do people view you on DeviantArt? Because like you know. Like I said, I you know I I admit to the fact that at first you know it's like when I was looking at your at your profile, it's like, you know, like in in my basic experiences on DeviantArt, like I've noticed that you know a, a lot of the girls that you know have like the more you know popular you know profiles and stuff like that are doing really good stuff. A lot of them will kind of have this like you know looking down on you sort of, sort of attitude or like if you approach them they, they kind of have this like well who the fuck are you and why are you talking to me oh you're male you have a penis that means you're the enemy why are you speaking to me get away it's like oh all i said was hello what the fuck is your problem you know so it's like over time it's like i had kind of you know developed a bit of a bit of that stigma that like you know somebody you know girl is pretty and it's you know successful with their profile and stuff that it automatically is most likely going to mean that they're going to like look down on me like who the fuck are you i don't know you you're you're a creeper you're a guy you're the enemy you're the opposite gender get the fuck out of here and like with you it's just a pleasant surprise that like you weren't like that and you approached me first I mean, I think we've been watching each other on DA for I don't even know how long of a time now, but it's like you approach me, and I just like I thought that was really cool. Just like, wow, she actually approached me, and she noticed my journal about you know the the DeviantArt features and stuff, and she's asking me about it. I'm like, wow, this is cool. So it kind of like totally blew you know my paradigms away. Well, I think a lot of the issue with people messaging a lot of more well-known popular cosplayers is that they are more well-known. They deal with, you know, hundreds of people messaging them, noting them, and a majority of the time it's messages is like, oh, you look really hot, or show me some more boob and butt. Like, so you got to realize that a lot of these more well-known, especially female cosplayers, get harassed. Yeah. 95 messages and notes and they won't post on there because it's none of the public's business but I know a lot of the times that I've not personally been on it but I have received a few messages that it's just it hampers your excitement towards new people talking to you because you never know what they're going to be like and when you get hammered and assaulted 95% of the time when you open up your messages and you see these notes from random people thinking oh yay somebody wants to talk to me and then all the messages, uh, nice, but you should show more of it. Or you get hammered on all sides by, you know, just guys being pigs and saying sexual comments. And it's just, it wears on you after time. And yes, I will admit that I fell into that category for a while. It's just like, I'm tired of doing, you know, my Tomb Raider because all I'm getting is compared to Lara Croft or how I don't have her body type or I need to show more of my body to be like her. And it's just like, no. But then, um, a couple of my really good guy friends is just like, well, why do you listen to him? I was like, it's kind of hard not to when you're getting hammered with it 95% of the time. But then, you know, one day I just sat down with myself and I was like, you know, not everybody is going to want to do that. Some of these questions are actually legit. You can't know just by one comment. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of where the issue comes from because a lot of the new cosplayers will message, you know, a more experienced one and be like, hey, they're not just going to automatically jump into what they want to know because they're like, well, I don't want to get yelled at or I don't want to think that they're that they I don't want them to think that I'm just doing it because I didn't try myself. Yeah. And I mean, you know, with my statement, I'm not just talking about cosplayers either. I mean, there's a lot of really you know, wonderful, talented, expressive ladies out there that do all sorts of awesome work and, you know, they take you know an equal amount of shit for it you know like like you were just saying so they kind of like get really defensive and it's unfortunate when a lot of them get completely shut down it's just like i can i can understand like being careful and not wanting to deal with creepers but just like assuming that absolutely everyone that's going to approach is absolutely going to be a creeper and like responding to hello with this condescending like get out of here i'm just automatically going to assume you're a shithead sort of thing 
um, you know, they're not doing themselves any kind of a uh, any kind of a service either by doing that. That's just like how a lot of the girls like. You know, when they believe that that nice guys don't exist, there could be nice guys all around them, and they don't see them. So it's almost like they're locking themselves into a a self fulfilling prophecy where all they're ever experiencing is the jerks and assholes because that's all they're willing to think of as as reasonably existing. So you know, all the all the nice ones worth dealing with. You know, it's. I mean, I know I've given you the the little white stain on the on the black dress analogy you know one of one of two ways you, you can roll with that either oh wow there's all that black dress and you know this this little white stain is going to be hardly visible amongst all that black dress or oh my god the whole dress is black and that white stain it's white it's just going to stand out and it's funny how you know it seems like whatever the negative connotation is is the one that that you know the girls tend tend to go to when it comes to literally address. It's like oh my god, horrible stain. Ah, uh, but when it comes to being able to see the nice guy in the sea of assholes, it's like it goes totally into a flip reverse. Instead of like oh he should be easy to spot, just like that stain will be easy to spot. Instead, it's like oh my god, how am I going to see the nice guys that are in this? vast sea of assholes so it's really all a perceptual thing i mean i know i, I used to have my own perceptions of that because like you know guys are just as guilty you know when when guys are used to you know girls just being so defensive and bitchy and, and whatever and they they start to think oh well this must be the only real reality then they completely miss you know the nice girls that are out there and it's like only you know within recent times with my own shifts and in, in you know perceptions have I, have I been able to develop a better quality of, of female friends such as you for example and all the more you know dramatic people like find me so insufferable they don't even want to deal with me in the first place they just stay away which leaves then only the people that are worth dealing with you know, such as yourself and people like Kristen and Katerina and Daphne and, you know, so on, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of that, too, is, again, falling back that, you know, some people are just so assaulted by the general masses that, you know, like, kind of like with the nice girls slash, you know, the bitchy stuck out girls is you got to realize what have they been through to make them that way? Were they just born that way? Or is it just for the fact that they've been hammered with it 95% of the time that it's just like, the only way to deal with that is to become defensive about it. Because yeah. they're just tired of being, having it shoved in their faces. Yeah, you know? and that, then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy one thing that that i've learned is that instead of reacting to that in the way that i used to react to that just give myself permission to be me no matter what and just actively respect their rights to be themselves and just say hey look you know i'm sorry you're taking me that way that's that's not really what i mean but i'm more than happy to respect what you want so you know i just wanted to have a conversation and get to know you and whatever because i value you as a person but if you want me to fuck off you know not a problem i'm just going to go right ahead and i'm going to respect what you want because you reserve that right and then they kind of do a double take like wait a minute i'm being respective that's not real in my belief system of reality but yet it's happening now i have to reevaluate this because it's like you said these girls are just used to what what they're used to so the only way to really get their attention is show them something different treat yeah. them with with respect even if they're not being respectful to you so that way if they truly are disrespectful cunts to the core then they're they're going to be like oh i don't want to deal with him that and they're going to go away anyway and then it's like okay your time is not wasted thank god but if they really are sweet girls that are just really fed up with the harassment then they're going to pause and be like okay wait a minute i'm not being harassed maybe there might be something to investigate her exactly Yeah, totally. So, why don't you tell us about? Um, I know you said you were at, um, you know, doing the Laura Croft thing at uh, GameStop. Uh, tell us how that went. That sounds pretty cool. Well, I'll admit that I didn't stay there for the full time, but the new Tomb Raider recently just got released, and um, 
I'm a big fan of the Tomb Raider series, obviously, since I cosplay from it. She was one of my first cosplays, but it was just like, I love Tomb Raider. I want to go out and help support it. So I went to the local GameStop and asked him, I was like, you guys get the new Tomb Raider. And the girl that was working, she's like, yeah, we are. We're going to start putting it up at like nine o'clock to be for the midnight release. I was like, well, I'm a cosplayer. I love cosplaying Tomb Raider. Could I come down and you know and help with the midnight release? And she's like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And just kind of unfolded from there. I only stayed for about an hour and a half because it was really cold and the big hype was for Fallout 4. <laughs> so it was like they, the Tomb Raider crowd didn't actually get there until <laughs> I had actually left. So, but that was Oops. pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like after I left, I got a bunch of texts. Well, where are you? We're here for Tomb Raider, and you're not here. <laughs> but fall, it was Fallout when I was there. And I was like, I'm running home and out of the gear. I'm not getting back in it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, guys, I was here for an hour and a half. It's you that's late, not me. <laughs> well, a lot of my friends were still at work and everything else, which I can understand. But it was just like, yeah. I'm not getting all back in all that gear. Nope. I love it, but I don't love it that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, like, um, I know that, you know, you also do a lot of, like, photo shoots and stuff. And, you know, there are photographers that uh, do all that. And then all that ends up on your uh, DeviantArt account. So, like, you know, what's that like? Like, what, what types of photographers do you deal with? And, like, how does all that roll well, I have my two main photographers that I love using, which are my best friends in the world. Um, one is uh, Naughty's Nature's Photography. She does amazing work, and she's super fun and bubbly to work with. But I've worked with other photographers, and just I love working with photographers who understand that, you know, it's not all about over-sexualizing the character. It's about bringing the badassness of the characters that you cosplay. Mm -hmm. And I found that, um, you know, with photography, and working with other photographers that you know it's just use common sense with it you know if they ask you to do something that you're not specifically comfortable with tell them don't just do it for sake of the character you know hold to your integrity and i mean i have worked with one photographer who i was not comfortable with and i walked off the shoot <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot but there are some cases it's just like especially with the ladies you know if you're going to a cosplay shoot with a photographer you don't know or you have not met bring a friend whether it's a guy <laughs> or a girl bring a friend because they're less likely to try anything shady yeah especially if the photographer's a guy yeah <laughs> and i mean it's not all guys that do it too there are some lady photographers out there who are just as bad <laughs> They just they just get like all super superiority complex and like you know treating you like you're just so beneath them, as if you're like a dog and they're snapping their fingers and expecting you to jump or something and you're like looking at them like I'm not your bitch. Well, not so much that is just some people do it just because it's a means for money. It's not their passion, or it's yeah. not something they enjoy doing. They just look at it. You like. Okay, I'll take your picture, but then I want my money. And just people like that are not fun to work with. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, I notice sometimes you work with um, other people. Are those mostly total strangers that are also coming to the same photographer at the same time? Or is this a group of friends you work with? Or how does that roll? Mm, it can go both ways. A lot of the times it's a group of friends that we've all correlated in brought together all of our costumes from like the same fandom but a lot of times like at conventions it's just a group of people cosplaying from the same anime and then it's just an official photo shoot you know photographers can be five or six a dozen and we just all kind of pile into the center and be like okay go do poses and then we'll take pictures okay let's see um Trying to think if there's anything else I left out or need to add or ask or um, is there anything else you want to say that maybe you feel I haven't touched on that like you want to make a point to, to get it out there but I maybe have not gone there yet. 
Well, I think going just back to my original message, if you are a new cosplayer or just starting out or you've been going for a while and you're not understanding why your cosplay is not taking off, stay with it. You know, don't be afraid to go up and talk to other people at conventions. If they're in costumes and you find their costume incredible, go up and talk to them, you know, compliment them, ask for a picture, ask for a hug, ask for advice. A lot of the times, a lot of these cosplayers have the same insecurities you do. Go up and talk to them. Yeah, I think a lot the of people are... Can happen, oh, go ahead. The worst thing that, that can happen is they blow you off, and then you just need to have the mindset that, okay, they blew me off. They are obviously not worth my time, and that's not the people <laughs> I want to be associated with. Yeah, totally. But, I mean, even some of the well-known cosplayers still suffer from that, you know. They don't think their costumes are any good either. We all have different sets and skills when we go into cosplaying. Go up and talk to some of these people. Chances are they are more than willing to help you, go above and beyond to help you, and everything else. Don't be scared to go up and talk to them. Yeah, I think a lot of people also kind of see, um, they, they're used to seeing time as the enemy, especially, you know, having been through school and all these unreasonable deadlines and so on and so forth. So a lot of people have like this instant gratification thing to where like they want their art profiles to be big and popular now. They want all this stuff now, everything now. And it's like, it's like planting a tree seed today and expecting a 40 foot tree tomorrow. And it's like, life just does not happen that way and you know when they see they're not getting like this instant success instant recognition whatever you know then they're like oh woe is me i suck i'll i'll never be good at any of this i don't know why i'm even bothering blah 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 and just people get into this big pity party due to their own you know impatience and their own low self-esteem and they already think that that oh i'm not that good anyway and so if they don't get like all this attention like right away they just use that as a permission slip to just like bash themselves even more and it just gets really neurotic i, I see that with a lot of artists in general on on deviant art you know they got all these people they watch that they like and everything but they're getting so discouraged and they forget that the people that they like they started at the beginning too it's not like they popped out of their mother's womb going i'm an artist Fuck yeah! you know i mean everybody started at the at the beginning and i think a, a lot of people really um forget that and what i think i'm going to do now is i'm going to enable screen share so that we can check out your gallery a bit oh there it is throwastorm.deviantart.com you can see that right yep okay there's one of your pictures there let's see here small photo thing i'll do every year just to showcase how long my hair is oh yeah you've got like You've got like weapon length hair. You could like it flat people with your hair. You could like tie that up in a in a freaking braided band and just use that as like a hair baton and just like whip the shit out of people with it. I mean, God, look at that long hair. It's almost down to your waist. All for cosplay's sake. I'm growing it out to do the actual original Tomb Raider. Uh, hair weapon. Yep, this was actually uh, last year when I grew my hair out. Yeah, so now it's a little longer now. And then this. I actually had the really long hair. It was just all coiled up and underneath that short wig. <laughs> He's got it all hiding. Oh yes, people are still amazed every time I take off a wig and my long hair falls out. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, and then for that, uh, for that next one, um, I think I'll go to my variant, which, uh, you seem to like. Come on, Deviant Art, cooperate. This 
this one. <laughs> Call me a fragile feminine flower again, motherfucker. <laughs> you got like your sword and shit there. Yeah, so that came from that one. My friend Albert de Flory was my Jalal for that one. <laughs> It's Which like, I really didn't give him a choice. I was like, ooh, you're cosplaying Joel. I demand a co-op shoot. And he's like, okay. I'm just going to own your ass right there, down on the floor, <laughs> bitch. Your ass is mine. Did you color your long hair in that one, or is that a wig? Nope, that is a wig. Okay. And then this is just casual you. Pretty much. When my hair was long again, we straightened it. We put so much product in it to keep it straight. And then we <laughs> went down to the lake for a photo shoot. And then I work with another friend online, uh, Daniel Makius. He's from Israel. He does a lot of editing work so i said feel free to use some of my photos <laughs> and so then that is the end result yep and we also have this this is one of my personal favorites that he's done from that set Let's see here. Um, anything in particular you want me to spotlight here? Not really. Yeah, here's one of yours when you were at one of the uh, cons. Yep, this is the Con in Lansing uh, Shudo Con. This con is amazing to go to. It's in March this year. It's March 20th to 22nd, I believe. March this year? It's already November oh, this year. Sorry, next year. Shush, okay. don't judge me. <laughs> I, I was going gonna, gonna to say I forgot where I parked my DeLorean. Um, <laughs> bit of a lower resolution one there. Yep, this was a con hallway shot. It's basically I saw this awesome Natsu cosplayer that is uh, Landon Matthew was also at ShudoCon, and I was like, Natsu, I need to get a picture with you. And he's like, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> and that's just another example of finding a cosplayer that you whose costumes think you awesome. I had not previously met this kid. I had literally just met him then. I was like, I demand a picture with you. And he's like, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Well, of course, he's just, he, okay, he's a guy, gorgeous woman wants a picture with him. He's also <laughs> not a stupid guy, so saying no would be stupid, and he's not a stupid guy. So there you go. <laughs> and um, I guess just casually you having some fun at the beach? Oh, this is actually a cosplay of uh, a gender-bent Luffy from One Piece. And see, this is another good example of showing some skin doesn't doesn't mean go all, you know, pimperella. You don't have to go all like, you know, freaking um, Miley Cyrus on anybody's ass or anything. You know, you could do the whole natural, normal look and it's still hot. You don't have to go all like superstar slut them as per what you were saying earlier. It's just yeah, about, it's all it's about, about, I tailor all of my costumes to be comfortable for me. So like in the terms of uh, Tomb Raider, you know, she wears the revealing outfit. I wear the costumes or I modify <laughs> the costumes in such a way that it still looks original, but it's modified for my comfort level with how much skin I'm comfortable with showing. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, my, my point is just, you know, there's, uh, there's a way to, there's a way to, 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 to show skin in a way that's not slutty 
is, you know, my point that, you know, you, people don't have to lock in on the whole, like, my Miley Cyrus sort of, you know, oh, show more of that ass, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, this is just a total, like, natural, normal, on the beat sort of thing. And, you know, I think you're very pretty in this. And I, I don't think that, you know, oh, just because you're not going all Miley Cyrus on anybody's ass that it's, oh, you have to be doing that in order for it to be considered hot, blah, blah, blah. That's all just, like, freaking societal programming, mental malware garbage. And I think a lot of people just don't know how to appreciate just the natural beauty of the female form so they get like all into these you know ridiculous you know mainstream sexual archetypes and then they think that oh that's an expression of sexuality that's an expression of beauty blah 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 when really all that is is freaking marketing and you know people want to make make money and shit it's all you know it's it's all just like it's it's fake and it's plastic I prefer yeah. I prefer authenticity. Like, look at this here. You're just chilling. You know, it's all authentic. It's pretty. You're looking good. You know, and it's all completely authentic. It's just you know, you're naturally just being you. It's not all mainstream fakeness, plastified, fucking bullshit. You know, and I really, you know, I have respect for girls that can just you know be themselves and just you know be comfortable with being themselves and you know here's another one here you just kind of come on deviantart be cooperative you know you're just chilling <laughs> almost reminds me of the gallows oh and the little navigation thingy went away i'm gonna have to hit the back button silly deviantart being all non-cooperative and shit. Yep, here's one of those badass shots there. Just kind of in the greenery there. Yep. And what is that supposed to be? That is um, an off-brand shoot I did with a friend of mine. It's our angel and devil shoot. And I think we know which one you're playing. Naturally. Naturally. You're the lady in red. Welcome to the Matrix. <laughs> and there you are again. See, you know, that's, that's like, that's custom and that's pretty. I mean, I could totally tell that, you know, you did all that yourself. I actually borrowed the dress from a friend of mine. Because I don't own a little red dress, so she owned it. And I was like, I need a favor. And she's like, what's that? <laughs> and I was like, can I borrow your little red dress for a shoot? And she's like, oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Well, you look good. I had a lot of fun doing that shoot. Sure seems like it. You seem pretty happy. You don't seem disgruntled or anything. Yeah. And then here's just you apparently chilling by a lake again. Yeah, I just got my hair cut. What were you doing with your hands here? You've got... I was doing the traditional Japanese nyapos. Uh, That's the thing. <laughs> oh, well, I've Showing never my heard of it. geekness. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard of it, so. Oh, and then here's you doing your Laura Croft thing. Yep. That looks like a river. Yep, it's the... River by the dam here, actually in town. Uh, I wasn't actually going to ask any geographics on it because, you know, we don't want any creepy stalkers uh, doing anything creepy stalkery. Yeah, 
Yeah, here in the Chicagoland area, we got a lot of, you know, lakes and streams and creeks and ponds and rivers and all sorts of nature stuff, too. Chicago, you know, people should just ignore the mainstream view of it because most of Chicago is green. It's like Chicago is a forest in denial. Chicago's like, I'm a city. It's like, no, fuck you, shut up. You're a forest. Just deal with it. Only the minority of Chicago is the concrete jungle sort of stuff. Like if you're downtown and in areas like that, you're going to see more of the concrete jungle sort of thing going on. But the vast majority of Chicago is extremely green, as I've showed you video of. Yeah. And is that also by the dam, whatever dam dam you're referring to? Yep, it's on the other side of it. Yeah, we got no shortage of damn dams around here <laughs> and waterfalls and all sorts of stuff. It's actually very pretty. And so is that. Long hair again. Got all sorts of plants and stuff. Is that a pool behind you or is that? It's a fountain. Yep, you do a lot of nature stuff. Yet another example of hot and natural without getting slutty. And plus you got your little badass gun stuff going on. Yep. Now here's the, here's the real question. Are the guns props or are they real? That's a question. Now, if they're real, I think any potential creepy stalkers might want to know that so that they can know not to go get their head blown off. <laughs> well, I will say something for the stream's sake that they are actually fake. All of the weapons and props that I use are actually props. They're toys that I've painted to look real. But I do know actually how to use a real gun, so <laughs> stalkers beware. So, yep, yeah, stalkers beware. She can be just a, as much of a badass in real life, so uh, stalkers don't don't fuck with the badass chick. Second Amendment for the win. Obama can kiss my ass. Is that by the dam again, or is that somewhere else? This is by a lake. Ah. One of the Great Lakes or a Little Lake? Little Lake. Ah, I live next to Lake Michigan. Well, like, not like right directly next. You know, I'm like 10 plus miles away, but I mean, Chicago's right next to this big freshwater sea that we refer to as a lake for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Yeah. I like your smile on that one. This one's cool. It's just like a natural look. You you seem genuinely happy. And that's a, that's a, that's another thing I like is when when you're taking photos of a girl and like she's genuinely naturally happy. She's not like putting on this fake smile like where she's in a bad mood and just trying to like fake it for the photography. Like, yeah, I'm smiling, see her. That's why I'm glad one of my uh, best friends is an amazing photographer because she is so much fun to work with. She brings out the natural smile in everybody she works with. And she's just, she's so understanding and willing to work with you if you're not comfortable with the pose. She also mm -hmm. did, she was also the one that did my uh, swimsuit one, which you noticed in all the poses, I'm extremely relaxed. You know, I'm comfortable with how I'm positioned. And she was willing to wait until I got comfortable with the shot before she snapped the picture. Yeah, that's cool because, like, you know, a lot of girls, when they do the photography stuff, it's like, you know, they could be in, like, a really bad mood or uncomfortable or, or whatever, and they'll just try to, you know, fake the smile just for the sake of the shoot. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, No, it's impossible really to be upset around this girl when she's behind a camera. She's just, she's amazing. That's cool. Do any of these photographers ever do any modeling in front of the camera, or are they strictly behind? Um, I'm not going to speak for her, but she is a cosplayer herself, but she's more comfortable behind the camera. 
but I have been getting her in front of it sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, every once in a while. Are any of those on your DeviantArt? Uh, they are, but for um, since I don't have her permission to actually say so, I'm not going to point out which one she is. Okay. That is fair. Let's see what other interesting stuff we got here. Ooh, I hear someone in a bad mood in the background there. Yeah, my nephew. Ah. Uh. <laughs> ah, poison uh, ivy. A modern day take on her, yes. Yeah. You were talking about these pictures just yesterday. Yep. Because we were on a on a Skype conversation with um um our friend Mike, which um his deviant art is like I have I have a hard time. Whoa, there's a lot of background noise there. <laughs> um, I have a hard time remembering his um his URL because it's like Bigira something, a bunch of numbers, whatever. But um, we were also on with um um Kazan or Kaxan or whatever the dragon um Krista. And we were also on with Richard, a.k.a. General Tate. And, yeah, we, we had quite a freaking party line going on. Even our, our friend uh, Trent, um, who lives in Thailand, but he's Australian. Um, you know, even even he joined us for a little bit of a time there. He was being all paranoid. It was funny. <laughs> it's like, okay, you can chill. It's all good. Don't worry. Just be happy. Yeah. Th this is just dress testing? Yes, that's a costume that I am working on. It's actually done now. I'm just waiting to find a location to shoot. But yeah, that was another Tomb Raider outfit that is really revealing that I've modified in such a way that I feel comfortable wearing it. Cool. I must say I like it. Yeah, I've been wondering about that one because I didn't notice that in any of your other pictures, like, except that one. So it's like, hmm, what's that one for? But, you know, it's one of those things on the list of, oh, I'll have to remember to ask her about that later. And then the asking part doesn't necessarily happen. <laughs> it will happen eventually. <laughs> yeah. This is hot. Look at that smile and just that look on your face and everything. That is adorable. Look at how absolutely freaking cute that is. Is that, are you, it looks like kind of, it looks Tomb, tomb Raider-ish, but without all the gear. This is actually a character brought to life from one of my friend's books that she's writing right now. Um, the character is Victoria Hunter. She's a bounty hunter, but basically she's one of the, I'm badass and I'm hot and I know it. <laughs> that, that definitely sums up this picture accurately. That is definitely what is being expressed here. But just know but that's captured the character. Well, yeah, that's well, that's not just the character that is also you. You definitely put yourself in there quite a bit, obviously. I mean, even like in the film industry and in acting and everything, um, the best the best film characters um, are the ones that evolve as the the actor's personality and the character's personality kind of become one, especially when they when they cast the character to actually match the actor as closely as possible so that the actor can play the character more naturally and you don't get a lot of bad acting going on 
it happens a, a, a lot in in Star Trek too. Like you know, like like uh, Commander Riker on Star Trek. The way you see his personality on the show is really a lot like how he really is. So it's like, I like it when they when you know the the actor and the character are are essentially one, and it brings out more of that authenticity. So yeah, you are hot and a badass, and you know it, and so that's why you are perfect for this. And you just present that level of adorableness, hotness, confidence in that like authentic way, not like that mainstream fake detention whoring way. Like, oh look at me, nah, nah, nah. you know, it's actually like completely and totally just authentic. And like, look at that one; that's cute too. You just sitting there chilling, like, yeah, I know I'm adorable, but not like in that narcissistic way, you know, but in that appreciative way. I think you realize the effect that your adorableness has on people, and then you feel very appreciated by it, and then that allows you to appreciate life more. And then here is the poison ivy once again. And is that also by the dam, or is that somewhere else? That is actually on a nature trail. Okay, so that's just a miscellaneous creek or something back there? Yeah. Anybody watching who doesn't have a DeviantArt account, of course, I highly recommend getting a DeviantArt account. DeviantArt is a really cool place and I've been I've been on this place practically forever. Why don't I have that one in favorites? Shame on me. Anyway, DeviantArt is a really great place and I mean I've met so many awesome people through DeviantArt, Troa included, and just it's definitely a, a unique place. Um, I've, you know, formed so many real, actual, meaningful friendships through this place. It's not even funny. So, you know, even though, yeah, just like anywhere else, you know, you're you're gonna have your trolls and your jerks and your your fetishists and your, you know, all levels of that. Um, you know, you've also got like your really genuine, awesome, authentic people, and you know. When you start running into those types, you know, there's some really awesome friendships that can be forged that are genuine. And here's you with your cat. And your cat's like, what the fuck? Yes, that is my, oh my gosh, kitty. That is um, my cat now for going on six years, I think. That is Jinx. She, you might notice her in some of my, um, on my Facebook profile, Troy Saizuki on Facebook that she is in almost all of my work in progress shots because she likes to be in the way all the time. Oh yeah, and when when we Skype, I definitely notice that that cat is like always up your butt and getting into things and trying to cuddle you and all sorts of stuff and yeah, that's that's cat is definitely practically glued to you most of the time. <laughs> the joys of being claimed by a feline. Yes, uh, but um, is that kind of like the joys of being claimed by a fae in the movie Lost or the series Lost Girl? <laughs> oh, should I be a smart ass and put that here? Obviously, lots of ha hairy pussy. I, I named it that to just be trolling because it's a folder of cats. It's all cats in that folder. If you want to, go ahead. Yeah, I just that that's why I have that folder so that people psychologically at first when they see it they're like what they think it's something else and they browse it it's, oh cats <laughs> just lots and lots and lots and lots of cats um <clears throat> I will demonstrate that folder right quick come on do dinner do 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 boom 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 we go. Yes, yeah, so as we can see, 
tons and tons and tons and tons of cats. And I have three cats myself. And this is totally in the wrong folder. What the fuck? That should be female photography. It sucks when folders are right directly next to each other. And like you click on one, and it goes into another and all this stuff and things move around. Kind of sucks. But yeah, cats and cats and cats and more cats. In excess of 14 plus pages of cats and more cats and more cats. Crap loads of, oh, look at that one with the tongue. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Lots and lots of cats. Animated cats. Cats freaking galore. Okay. Ooh, it looks like one of your commenters got deleted off a of DA. Hey, when that happens. Let's see. Anything else we should focus on here? No, not really. I think we've pretty well encompassed my entire gallery, I think. Oh, for the most part. I mean, I don't know how many more pages there are after that, but... I guess people can kind of get the idea. I think we've we've been through enough for that. If people don't get the idea at this point, they're brain dead, and there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> okay. So, anything else you you want to say or wrap up with? Or obviously, we've given people your DeviantArt URL, troastorm.deviantart.com. That's been all over the screen for like the last however many tens of minutes or whatever. So any other social media profiles or anything else you want to say or whatever as we kind of uh, go into the conclusion of this? Um, other accountants, you can find me on Facebook. Just uh, search Troa Suzuki. You can find the spelling of it down in the description, and um, there you can see what costumes <clears throat> I'm planning on doing, what are in the works, or what I'm looking for locations to photo shoot. Um, go ahead and add me on there, like, comment, and share, and everything else. Um, on DeviantArt, if you are watching this, feel free to add me to watch lists, send me messages, don't be scared to straight up a conversation. I may not be able to reply right away because real life and other responsibilities, but I promise I do look at the messages and comments. I try to respond to everybody and just don't be afraid to walk up to start a conversation with me. You know, it might take me a couple days, but I will respond. Unless you're a creeper, then be afraid. Be very afraid. Yeah, I, I don't tolerate <laughs> creepers. And one thing I will ask that is if you do strike up a conversation, please be respectful on everything that you say. Nobody likes dealing with an immature person. It's just, it's time consuming. We all have our own lives and it's just, don't waste our time. Yeah. Otherwise she'll sick her dogs and her cats on you. And you should be very afraid of Jinx. She's very vicious. <laughs> I take it she's not declawed. Nope, she still has all of her claws. I refuse to declaw my cats. Yep, yeah, mine got their claws too. So, creepers, if you want your testicles to remain intact, don't have her sick her cat on you. Because if you fuck with her, you're totally going to get the type of pussy that you were not looking to get. Exactly. The painful kind. So, any other social media sites you're on, like Twitter or anywhere else? Nope, I'm only on Facebook and DeviantArt. Are you on YouTube at all? Not really, no. Sorry, I'm trying to time my mic in between the birds of fit throwing up there. Ah, uh, okay. I know that uh, I know you were you were telling me at some point in the future you're planning on YouTube and also Sue, but uh, there's some things you need to take care of first as far as getting a P 
P.O. Box and things like that. I think you also said people were offering to, like, send you, like, cosplay stuff, but you don't want to, like, give anybody your physical address, so you're just kind of thinking, well, maybe I should get a P.O. Box so people can send me what they want to send me, and if they want to go creep the post office, at least that's not my house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we may yet end up seeing her on uh, both uh, TSU or SU, whatever you want to call it, and YouTube, but that's going to be something for the future because she hasn't gotten her P.O. Box yet. So, But something to look forward to. And I'm sure we'll have her back on PSEC again so that uh, you'll be able to see her lovely face in motion and video and hear her beautiful voice and all that good stuff and hear her rant on and on about her newest cosplay adventures and so on and so forth. So yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, anything else you want to say? I don't want to just like shut it down and be like... <laughs> mm, nope, not really. I think we covered everything. Alrighty, cool. Well, thank you everybody for watching. And um, hope you all have a nice day, night, whatever it is, wherever you are, and catch you all later.